I'm Sam Vatnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The American Civil War, fought between 1861 and 1865, spawned numerous myths and falsities. First of all, the Republicans, later headed by Abraham Lincoln, did not intend to abolish slavery. They merely wanted to contain it. In other words, to limit slavery to the 15 states where it had already existed. Actually, most of the Democrats accepted this solution. It was this emerging consensus that gave rise to the war. It led to a schism, a breakup of the Democratic Party. The fire eaters left the Democratic Party and established their own pro-secession political organization. Growing constituencies in the South, for example, urban immigrants and mountain farmers, oppose slavery as a form of unfair competition. It is also not true that most Southern families had slaves. Less than one quarter of Southern families owned slaves in 1861. Slave-based, mainly cotton-raising enterprises, were so profitable that slave prices almost doubled in, 1850, in the 1850s. This rendered slaves out of reach of everyone but the wealthiest citizens. Cotton represented three-fifths of all the exports of the entire United States in 1860. Southerners, dependent on industrial imports as they were, supported free trade. Northerners were vehement trade protectionists. The federal government derived most of its income from custom duties, in other words, from the South. Income tax and corporate profit tax were not yet invented. Secession was not an orderly process. The states seceded one by one, following secession conventions and statewide votes. The Confederacy, or more formally, the Confederate States of America, was born only much later. Not all the constituents of the Confederacy seceded at once. Seven, the core Confederacy, seceded between December 20th, 1860 and February 1st, 1861. These were South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. Another four, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas, joined them only after the attack on Fort Sumter in April 1861. Two states, Kentucky and Missouri, seceded but were controlled by the Union's army throughout the war. Maryland and Delaware were slave states but did not secede. President James Buchanan, who preceded Abraham Lincoln, made clear that the federal government would not use force to prevent secession. Secession was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court only in 1869 in, a, in the case of Texas versus White. And that was four years after the Civil War has ended. New England almost seceded in 1812 during the Anglo-American conflict in order to protect its trade with Britain. The Constitution of the Confederacy prohibited African slave trade. In other words, it was illegal to buy slaves from Africa, but it allowed interstate trade in slaves already in its territory. The first Confederate capital was in Montgomery, Alabama, not in Richmond, Virginia. The term of office of the Confederate president Jefferson Davis was the first president, was six years, not four, as was the case in the Union. Fort Sumter was not the first attack of the Confederacy on the Union. It was preceded by attacks on 11 forts and military installations on Confederate territory. Lincoln won only 40% of the popular vote in 1860, hence the South's fierce resistance to his abolitionist agenda. They claimed that he had no mandate to implement such a fundamental change. In 1864, the Republicans became so unpopular they had to change their name to the Union Party. Lincoln's Vice President, John Summit, was actually a Democrat and hailed from Tennessee, a seceding state. He was the only senator from a seceded state to remain in the Senate. Reconstruction of the South started long before the war ended in Union-occupied Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee. 
Slave tax was an important source of state revenue in the South. It constituted up to 60% of income, state income, in South Carolina. Emancipation, therefore, led to near bankruptcy of the Southern states. The Union states of Connecticut, Minnesota, and Wisconsin refused to pass constitutional amendments to confer the vote on black males. The Union Army consigned black labor gangs to work on the plantations of loyal Southerners, forcibly separated the black workers from their family, families. This was as close as one gets to slavery. Contrary to myth, nearly two-thirds of black families were headed by both parents. Slave marriages were legally meaningless in the antebellum South, that's true, but slave families were pretty much intact. Nearly 90% of slave households remained intact till death or forced separation. The average age of childbirth for a slave woman was 20. Segregation was initiated as much by blacks as it was by whites. The freedmen, free uh, blacks, lobbied hard and long for separate black churches and educational facilities. Nor was lynching confined to blacks. For instance, a white mob lynch, lynched in September 1862 44 Union supporters in Gainesville, Texas, all of them white. Similar events took place in Shelton Laurel, North Carolina. The Ku Klux Klan was the paramilitary arm of the Democratic Party in the, in the South, though never officially endorsed by it. It was used to dis discipline the workforce in the plantations, but it also targeted Republicans. The Democrats changed their name after the war to the Conservative Party. By 1877, they have regained power in all former Confederate states.